Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing a video about going to some of the landmarks and some of the surrounding areas of where I live. Um, so we're on our way right now to the Pagoda, which is an outlook or overlook of uh, the city of Reading. Um, and as long as the weather's clear and cooperate, you can see the whole city. It's a pretty nice area to go. A lot of people from all over the surrounding states come up and hang out. Um, I mean, lately they've there's been some noise complaints about people having car meets and stuff like that but it's a really nice cool area to go and if you're in this area always ready to good to stop in and check it out so i'm writing pennsylvania Pagoda. yeah and this is going to be like a four or five part series of, of going to visit different places and riding around and showing you some of the roads in pennsylvania so hopefully you guys like these videos and stay tuned Thanks. Okay, coming up on my right is uh, the car tech plant, which they build car frames and stuff like that, and anything metal. It's on the right and left, and the Reading Philly Stadium. It's the minor league baseball team for the Philadelphia Phillies. Uh, there's a few little uh, places to visit here or there in, in this city. It's a pretty interest, interesting city. I mean, I've been to New York, and I love New York. That's definitely hands down one of the best cities ever. Looks like a Harley Davidson bike on my right. Yeah, I think so. It's <laughs> a lot of bikers around here. I got to try someday to see if I can ride a Harley Davidson. I'll have to stop in one of the dealerships and see if I can get a demo and ride one. I've ridden all kinds of bikes, uh, Ducatis I've owned, Yamaha, Suzuki's, Triumphs, uh, but never a Harley. That's, I'm gonna have to see if I can do that or an Indian. I do definitely want to ride an Indian Scout at some point. It looks so nice. These two. 
there are three turns that are coming up are really steep especially if you're coming down on a motorcycle they're pretty scary coming down on a bike uh, a few people have crashed out up here coming downwards and not going up but you just gotta take it easy through here if you ever come riding at, at these turns they're really sharp yeah, riding up the, the roads, the, the mini mountain up to the pagoda, it's really foggy and it's like 7.30 in the morning. It's pretty crazy how foggy it is. Uh, like a moron, I stalled. Feels, feels like it's such a weirdo when you stall out. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you guys can see how foggy it is. It's like really foggy when you're riding up these roads on it. I guess it was... Well, you know what fog comes from. <laughs> when the ground's high and the air is cold. Can you see how foggy it is? I can barely see when I was riding. It's it's really a dense fog. It, I don't know if it shows it that well on the GoPro, but I'm like just going by the yellow line and the white line to the right. Like it's just really dense fog. I mean, I've never really ridden in such fog, and um, the street doesn't it only has one beam, one headlight on. Yeah, using my high beams so I could see a little bit better, but I know the high beams don't really help in the uh, fog. Yeah, if it wasn't so foggy, I could, you would be able to see the city of uh, Redding, like um, once you get past these trees. It's a pretty uh, nice sight, like right here to the right, you can pull over and look over, but in the summer, it's really hard to see most over there because the trees overgrown. Um, but like once it's fall and winter, you can go to the lookout. There's a few lookout spots up here near the pagoda and you can look out and you can see the city of Reading. I mean, not much to look at, but still nice to look over a city. Kind of like uh, Hawks Nest, New York, if you've never been there. It's another great uh, place to visit. And you see how the fo fog is getting denser and denser. It's like it's just so hard to see when you're riding up up these roads right now. Yeah, this was this must be what heaven looks like when you're arriving to the pearly gates coming up to my left there's a tower um it's like a fire watch tower now but back in the day i think in the early 1900s or late 1800s it was supposed to be into turn into like a resort um with a railroad station for pe for people to come visit reading because reading was one of the biggest um railroad places back in the early 1900s in the whole United States. Um, even the Reading Railroad in Monopoly, that's what it's based off of. Now here's another look out to my right. It's so foggy, you can't see anything. But yeah, it's there's a few lookouts. There's another lookout coming up in a few feet or in about a minute or two. And that one's got um, porta potties, which is awesome. Cause up here, there isn't many places to go potty. And you see all the bicycle trails, you see to the, my right, um, people come up from all over the place to ride mountain bikes all over the mountains up here. There's mountain bike trails all over. Yeah, you'll see to my right right now, you see the lookout with the porta potties. I, I always like when you have to go to the bathroom, there's a porta potty around or some bathroom. I hate when you're riding around having to pee really bad and can't find one. <laughs> I'm 
pretty sure a lot of us have ride have experienced that at some point. And we're almost at the Pagoda parking lot. And here we are at the Pagoda. Give you a little uh, bit of a history of this Pagoda. The pagoda. It was commissioned in 1906 at a cost of $50,000 by William A. Whitman Sr. to cover his stone quarry. The pagoda was completed in 1908. It was originally intended to be a luxury resort atop Mount Penn, but due to the bank foreclosure and denial of a liquor license, Whitman never opened the pagoda. By 1910, the pagoda and surrounding 10 acres were deeded to local business owner Jonathan Mould and his wife Julia Bell. On April 21, 1911, they sold the pagoda to the city of Reading for the sum of $1. Since then, the pagoda has been owned, loved, and cared for by the citizens and the city of Reading. A quick fun fact, uh, back in the day, in, I think 2010, um, M. Night Shyamalan, the famous movie director, that lives in somewhere near Philadelphia, like Westchester area. He directed a movie called The Last Airbender, and this is where it was shot. A lot of it, they had the, all this, all these trees cut down and everything, and they shot a big chunk of the movie here. It's a pretty cool fact. So, see, the famous people do come to the Reading. Taking the picture of the thumbnail for the YouTube. This will be the thumbnail for it. Here I'm walking around. I'm gonna show you around what the pagoda looks like in case you've never been here. Um, give you a few little uh, interesting facts about it. Uh, the pagoda is seven stories high. It's 28 feet wide and 50 feet long, and it stands at 620 feet above the city of Reading and 866 feet above sea levels. Uh, now I'm just walking down. I mean, it says closed everywhere. Everything. I think this is closed for now because of the coronavirus. Uh, I guess there's not a very good ventilation system inside of there. But there's a lot of stairs. Another fun fact, when I was young and in high school, I used to cut school and walk through the woods that are down here. <laughs> but yeah, like that down in this area, if you walk down the steps, it's all closed right now. Um, I, down there, all these trees were cut down and that's where the last airbender was shot. It was pretty neat. I'm just looking around how everything's grown in uh, 11 years. And there's benches to sit. I mean, when it's nice and sunny and the fog's not there, you can see the city. I mean, it's a not a bad city, I guess, to see. I mean, I'd rather look over at the skyline of uh, Manhattan or New York City, anything like that. But And just walking around, there's plenty of area to walk around, and a lot of property around the pagoda. Um, and down there, like I said, is where the last airbender was shot. All that whole area was no trees around, it was just all tree stumps. Um, but I'll give you a few more facts about um, the pagoda. Um, the walls are five feet thick at the base down here, tapering the two feet thick at the top of the second floor. From there to the top, they are frame covered with terracotta shingles. There are 60 tons of tiles on the pagoda. Um, it is anchored into the mountainside, the 16 tons of bolts. Inside walls are concrete plaster. All, all the trim and stairway, stairways are solid oak. There are a total of 87 steps to the top of the pagoda. Only the pagoda this is the only pagoda in the world with a fireplace and a chimney. Um, like I said, and there's a um, souvenir shop. You can buy postcards, a few snacks. Um, you can make donations if you'd like, and you can walk all the way to the top, and they have um, those, they're like binoculars. I always forget what they're called. You put a quarter in, and you can look out um, close up to the city. Um, yeah, right there, there's a sign saying that due to the coronavirus, COVID-19, it, it's going to be permanent and closed until further notice. And they have cameras recording, so wouldn't try to do anything bad around here. Uh, no, another thing they call the parking lot of the pagoda is where make out a, a city. A lot of uh, people come up here, make out, cheat on their husbands or wives, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, in the summer, a lot of kids uh, and young people hang out and 
blast music and stuff. It's been a lot of noise complaints from citizens that live around there. Um, yes, what else? Uh, before the days of the radio broadcasting, lights flashed as the signals of the people of Reading. Morse code was used to direct firemen, promote fundraising campaigns, and give the public the results of sporting events. The code was based on the lights. A white light was a dash, while a red light was a dot. And there's a bell on the seventh floor that was cast in Japan in 1739. It was purchased by um, the original owner Whitman in 1906 and it shipped via the Suez Canal to New York Harbor and arrived in Reading on May 5th of 1907 by rail. Um, every year at 9 p.m. on Christmas Eve, the pagoda lights flash to let the children know that Santa is on the way. So they, they like to cater to the kids and people of the city. Um, so now, now we just get on and go ride some of the twisty roads that are around here. It's pretty nice road riding around here. Yeah, about to hit some of the twisty roads around here. Um, hopefully the fog's starting to clear out a little bit. It's kind of hard to go fast around turns when you can't see. Doesn't look like it has yet. Uh, hopefully soon the sun breaks through and my bike's getting dirty on the bottom. Ugh. Yeah, coming up to the watchtower on my right, and it looks like the parking lot is closed. They have all the entrances uh, closed off. I guess due to COVID, they've closed everything. It's kind of weird. Just pulling over here real quick. Yeah, I was looking to see if he can enter, but he can't. I think that's a radio tower. Yeah, and up here around the Pagoda, they usually have car racing like once a year. I think it's called the Pagoda Derby Drive. Um, they close off the roads to uh, us citizens and they have races around the Pagoda on these really twisty roads. Like coming up to the Pagoda, there's a few ways to come up and the one way it's like really twisty roads is fun. But it leads right into the city. Um, but other than that, like I said, a lot of mountain biking. Um, a lot of people exercising usually when it's a nice summer day up here. <laughs> <laughs> 